How to rear larval fire salamanders to metamorphosis. Week 1 Hi YouTube, you might have seen my previous video where my adult fire salamanders gave birth. This is what the babies looked like originally and I had 26 of them. I decided to put them all in a tub initially and I was going to raise them all together like this but I soon discovered that the babies attack each other and actually I found five dead ones quite quickly so this is not a good way of keeping them. However much food you give them at this stage if you keep them together in a tub they still end up seeing each other's tails and feet and things as food and they do appear to just bite each other continuously so um, it is definitely better to keep them in individual containers initially at least. Week 2 Okay, you can see I've separated each individual salamander larva into a separate tub. Um, these are just the tubs that you buy from uh, pet food shops that sell giant mealworms. So they're quite small tubs. And then this just allows you to feed them all individually. Um, I keep the water fairly shallow. It's enough to kind of cover the salamander larva, but not too deep. And this just keeps the water really well oxygenated. And then what I do is just change the water every day. Um, I think this is crucial, firstly to add more oxygen to the water, but also to keep the water clean. Um, because I feed them every day on pieces of cut up worm. Um, you'll be able to see probably some of the pieces of cut up worm in some of these tubs because uh, I'm filming this at a time where I've just fed them. So some of them have eaten, some of them haven't yet. Um, you can see the actual salamander larvae have started to grow. They're a little bit bigger, um, but they haven't really done much yet in the way of, you know, absorbing gills or anything. The gills are actually bigger, if anything. You can see markings on the salamanders. Some of the markings appear stronger on some of them. Um, this one, for example, looks just like it did when it was first born. Um, but yeah, not much has changed. And you can see what I do as well is add pieces of um, weed, pond weed, in with them. And again, this just helps to oxygenate the water a bit. And I think the plants actually take some of the uh, kind of bad nutrients and things out of the water. I just use bottled spring water for all my water changes. Um, don't use tap water because it's full of all kinds of different chemicals that could very quickly kill your salamanders. Um, also, what I was going to say is when you clean out your tubs, what I do is I tip all the water out and you'll find that there'll be um, droppings and things that the salamander larvae have done. And this can build up as a kind of a layer of scum on the bottom of the um, tub. So what you need to do is just get some uh, kitchen towel and really wipe around each tub before you tip in some fresh spring water. So after my initial bad start where I lost five salamander larvae to them kind of biting each other, um, I thought I was doing really well at this stage because the by changing the water every day and by feeding them every day, that seemed to be working. They were growing well and every single one of them was looking healthy. So I definitely would recommend this technique. Another really important thing to remember is when you're feeding them the cut up worms, um, what I do is chop them up into bits and put the worms in and then I watch and I, I wait until the salamanders have either eaten them all or after a certain amount of time if they haven't eaten them I don't leave the um, bits of cut up worm in with them because the worms um, obviously die quickly and then that fouls the water so you need to remove any bits of um, dead worm as soon as you can. Um, so you can see at this point I'm down to 21 salamanders out of 26 um, but they're all healthy at this point. Another thing worth mentioning is about keeping the plants fresh so I cut them like this straight from my pond outside when they're all green when I first put them in like this that's fine after a few days though they look like this and they start to rot down and that can really foul your water so you do need to keep changing the plant and putting fresh in. Week 3 Okay, as soon as the salamanders start to absorb their gills, 
um, you've got to be quite careful with them because they can decide to climb out of the water at any point from this point. Um, and I actually had another one die, um, which I was really gutted about because I thought they were all doing so well. And they got to this point and I thought they wouldn't crawl out yet for a couple more days. So I kind of left them without any lids on and one of them just climbed out of the tub and uh, walked around somewhere in the room and I found it in the room and it had all dried up. So you've got to be really careful. So I'll show you in a minute what I ended up doing, which was to put lids on all of these to stop them from crawling out. But you can see as soon as the gills start to develop, oh, by the way, this is the size of worm that I'm giving them at this point, chopped up worm to about that size so they can manage them. Um, but yeah, when the gills start to absorb, what I do is put the water level right down so you can see the backs of the salamanders are just sticking out of the water slightly. Um, that just makes them absorb their gills, I think, a little bit quicker and also allows them to start gulping air. This one you can see has almost fully absorbed its gills and has started to get the more typical salamander head shape. Um, and also you can see the... Um, the patterns start to emerge a bit more and the yellow colour starts to come through a little bit. Right, so these ones, um, I've added moss in with them and it just means that they've got something then to allow them to kind of grip on and climb out of the water if they want to. Um, this is also important because as soon as they start to fully breathe air, they've taken all their gulps and, you know, they've absorbed their gills so they're fully kind of uh, air breathing then you need to be careful because they can actually drown at this point so if your water level was too deep at this point and they didn't have anything to grip onto they could drown so by adding the moss it just allows them to pull themselves clear of the water level and prevent any drowning um, so yeah definitely be careful about salamanders climbing up um, tubs and escaping Obviously at this stage, if they do escape, they can dry out just so quickly. With the salamanders that you're seeing now, these are the ones that are most developed so far. You can see the black and yellow coloration is starting to come through and they're starting to look a lot more like small adults. So after having 26 originally and now being down to 20, I was determined not to lose any more. And these ones that I've got at this point, they were starting to fatten up and I was really pleased with how they were looking. So, yeah, I was just determined just to keep it to 20. Right, you can see the tubs here. This is how I've been keeping them with little nets over the top of each one um, secured with hair bands. Make sure the netting is pulled really tightly through the hair bands as well because um, you don't want any salamanders to kind of get through the top and find themselves stuck in an edge somewhere. Week four. Okay, you can see here that I haven't changed the care very much at this point. It's all the same. You've got them with the very shallow water and moss. And again, I'll show you these in the order of like least developed to most developed. So these ones you're looking at here, you can see the gills have pretty much completely absorbed. Um, if not, they have all completely absorbed. And you can see the coloration is starting to come through on some of these. Um, but the first ones that you saw there were still quite brown looking. These ones, you're starting to see the yellow coloration coming through. And they do have this more distinct kind of head shape. Um, you can see some of these are looking like they're going to be very striped. Um, and you've got others that are looking like they've got more kind of blotchy appearance. Um, but these ones are starting to get darker, look, where the brown kind of background coloration starts to go a bit blacker. This one's going to look nice eventually. It'll be a nice striped version. And this one, look at the stripes on the back of this one. Lovely. I really like them like that, where they've got the, the long stripes down their back. So they're going to be my favourite ones, I think. Um, but here you can see yeah, the, the brown background coloration is getting blacker. And, yeah, looking much more like proper... Um, mini adults so I can't wait to um, see these all as a group because I'll put them back in together when they're all metamorphosed I'll start keeping them again in groups because I, I don't think they attack each other at that point I think um, once they're on land they'll be fine and they'll just um, 
live they can live in groups of things like i've found them in the wild in france underneath rocks and things and they've been in quite big groups so here you go you can see i'm still at 20 at this point and they're all just in the moss week five Okay, I had one more salamander that was kind of weaker and thinner than all the others that was refusing to eat. And obviously with an animal this tiny, it's not like you can force feed them or anything. So I'm down to 19 and I, I think all of the ones that I've got left are eating so well and becoming a lot fatter all the time that I think this is going to be the number I'm going to end up with, 19 out of 26. So I was a bit gutted because, um, you know, when I kept midwife toads, I reared up all the tadpoles and I started with, I think it was 75 tadpoles and I, I ended up having 75 metamorphosed toadlets. So I did really well with those. Um, and I was hoping with the salamanders that the same thing would happen. But obviously, you know, with the initial disaster, having a few biting each other and, and having five die straight away, um, that obviously <laughs> took a good chunk out of the numbers but 19 is still you know a fairly respectable number to end up with and you can see they're all looking great um, at this stage and it's been a really nice experience to rear them all up and I'll know um, what to expect next year if I do it again and hopefully I will end up getting more like 100% of them to metamorphose um, but yeah I really kind of recommend keeping this species it's such a brilliant species and it's so they're so stunning when they get to this stage and you can see like the black and yellow really coming through they're just lovely and when they um, are in a little group underneath a, a little log or something when when you lift a bit of wood out of the way or a bit of cork bark or something and you see them all together in a little group they just look amazing um, they're also really good at chasing down uh, prey items so although I've been feeding them worms up to this point and worms are certainly best I would say for kind of fattening them up um, but they can chase down little crickets and wood lice and that kind of thing as well if you ever feed your salamanders crickets make sure you gut load the crickets first and that prevents them from nibbling your salamanders um, also don't forget to dust any small prey items with something like Nutribol to give extra vitamins and minerals to your salamanders. Okay, I'm just gonna remind you of some of the main stages through the development of the salamanders. Stage one, just after birth. The larvae are about an inch long. They're fairly thin looking, mostly brown, and the gills are fairly short. Stage two, ridged appearance to back. I noticed that after about a week of development, you could see this kind of strong ridged look to their backs. Um, also the gills look a little bit longer and have maybe started to turn a little bit red. Stage three, pattern and large red gills. I noticed that their patterns become a lot more contrasty at around the same time that their gills enlarge and become really red. I think the reason their gills enlarge is just to allow them to absorb more oxygen around their body. Stage 4 gills and tail fins absorb. At this point I noticed that the salamanders quite often don't seem as interested in food. I think that's because they've been absorbing their tail fin and their gills so they need less nutrition. This period only lasts for a couple of days there and then they become very eager feeders again. The yellow coloration starts to come through a bit at this point as well. It's not fully bright yellow yet, but you can see it. And the background colour remains fairly brownish and the head shape starts to change and become much more like an adult fire salamanders. Stage 5. Metamorphosed. Colours developed. Fully air breathing. The final baby fire salamanders are well worth the effort. You can see with the black and yellow coloration they just look stunning. I hope this video has been useful to some of you that are planning on rearing your own fire salamanders. I'm not saying this is the exact way to do it because obviously I lost a few along the way but I thought by sharing my experience and telling you about the ones that didn't make it hopefully that will avoid any of you making the same mistakes that I did um, and hopefully it will allow you to raise a good amount of baby fire salamanders 
because uh, the more fire salamanders, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Also, the more people that can breed this species in captivity, it just means that for the pet trade, people aren't taking them from wild populations. Just one final important thing that I should mention is that I've been raising these fire salamanders at around 18 degrees centigrade. Um, it's very important that they don't go above 20 degrees centigrade for any good period of time because again that will kill them. So this species really does appreciate lower temperatures. Um, I've been keeping mine in my conservatory but I've got like a air conditioner in there so I can keep the temperature pretty cool. I've also been keeping them on the floor on ceramic tiles which has really helped to keep the uh, temperatures cool. Okay, thanks for watching my video. Um, please check out my other videos and hit subscribe to see more that I do in the future.